All right. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Level Head. We're just going to get right into things. So before I get started, there is one option I want to set right here. Uh, this will help me restart faster for when I inevitably mess up during the run. But you'll know what that does shortly. And I want to set my cursor in a perfect spot. And now we're going to get started right away. So we'll get started in three, two, one, go. And all right. So welcome everybody, this is Level Head. I am Illegally Sam. I'll be doing the run today, as you can see. And I'm joined by... Uh, I'm Cashew. I'm one of the commentators, and I also love Level Head. Awesome game. And, uh... Pure Nix? Oh yeah, uh, I'm Pure Nix, AKA PK. Uh, been playing this awesome game for three years now. So very excited to be here with Sam and uh, showing y'all what Levelhead's all about and watching Sam crush through this game. <laughs> yeah, he's already past the first level. There's a little bit of a shortcut there. Yeah, things will be go happening very, very fast in this game, especially at the start here. Yeah. So maybe while uh, Sam's just uh, getting on the, through the easy stuff here, a quick briefing of what's happening. Uh, Levelhead is a precision platformer, uh, very much emphasizing user-created levels. It's got an amazing level editor and also has an amazing platform pr promoting your levels. So what's happening in each level here, Sam is... Um, he has to go and get the package and deliver it to the goal. That is the objective of every level, and uh, we'll be seeing lots of that here. I don't know if... Um, Cashy maybe has a few insights on these first few levels. Well, in that last level, he did a pretty important piece of tech that you're going to see a lot called a super jump. Uh, the package that he's carrying to the goal can actually be jumped off of midair to give you like a double jump, jump essentially. So he's going to be doing that a lot, like just there. He did a ceiling super jump. Yeah, that package opens up all sorts of um, fun techniques that you can use. Uh, it's pretty instrumental, I think, in well, just about the whole game as far as maneuvering around um, around the level, especially when you get advanced like Sam and doing it quickly. <laughs> yeah, pretty much half of this game's tech is all variations of super jumps. Yes. And, and that was a pretty clean run of package jump template from uh, Sam, I think. That looks smooth. <laughs> Yeah, especially the part at the end with the key. I will say, most of these levels will look very, very smooth if you don't know what the fastest version of these levels are, while I'm going to be complaining internally because I mess stuff up, even if people don't notice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th that's the case for every speedrun, so uh, just know we believe in you, Sam. <laughs> you can do it. Yes, and yep. uh, something I should mention, especially for like some of these levels coming up, because it'll be very obvious. Uh, as I finish the level, you'll notice there's the goal there, and it has like all of those dots floating above it. And as a part of this uh, game's mechanics of delivering the package, there's a dunk bonus, because everyone knows when you deliver packages, and just like in real life, how far down you dunk the box is very important. And so, the higher up you get the dunk, the more points you get, but the higher up, the slower it is. So every opportunity I get, as long as it does not take too much time to do so, I'll be aiming for the bottom of the goal, because it saves up to a f more than a full second, versus getting a maximum dunk. Yeah, it's pretty much one of the few times you'd actually want to get the bottom dunk, unless you just prefer the bottom. Yeah, so if you're doing uh, individual level records, I believe uh, any size of the dunk is optional, but specifically in campaign mode, it's min dunk that you want, correct? Yes. Yeah. Because uh, individual levels are timed with the in-game timer that you see at the top there, but campaign, obviously, we do everything in real time, so even everything between the levels matters just as much as what we're doing in the levels. I guess, and that's a perfect oh, example that was of another super jump. A perfect example of avoiding the top of the goal, even though it's easier to hit than the bottom. Greetings, you know, I didn't because care it is faster. Anyway. Yeah. And you'll see between uh, each level here is the uh, campaign map, and uh, Sam is going to be going through a very specific, fastest version of the uh, campaign levels, and we'll be skipping a lot of uh, side routes. Um, 
Now, I, Sam, Cashew, maybe you guys can tell me. I don't think there's any secret shortcuts you guys are taking on that campaign uh, level, uh, is there? No, unfortunately, there is only one split path uh, that doesn't require, like, getting extra unlockables, like gems or the bugs. There's only one split path, and it is 100% slower, and so we don't even take the other side of the path. Yeah, the split path, it's either play two levels or play one level, and obviously you choose to play the one. Yeah, because not only is it one less level, that one level takes about 15 seconds, and so the two levels are never going to be any faster. Yeah. So on that uh, last level pressure point there, just uh, a little fun thing to note there, uh, especially if you're into user creation level, is that a lot of this, the interactions are sort of simulated. So if there's a pressure switch on the ground, it's not just uh, Giratine, the robot that can hit it, but you can lure enemies onto it, you can throw the package onto it. Um, I don't know, there might be a few other items that can pressure it, but uh, there's lots of options for fun things like that. So you might notice that it seems like something crazy is happening, but it's just Sam luring an enemy onto a pressure plate or something like that. Yeah, and that's what's so awesome about the editor uh, par portion of this game, Skipping is all these different seminars. switches that you can oh, use. These can be added into your own levels to basically interact with anything. Yeah, because, uh, something important to note, basically everything you see in a level that, like, would be, like, programmed that way normally is done as a part of the specific level. It is not... Very few things will be inherently from the properties of the items themselves. Because that's just the power of this game's ev editor at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah so uh, this is the first level where we get to see one of the six different power-ups in the game. Uh, possibly... I would say maybe the favorite power-up. I don't know. We, we could have some arguments over that, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's the tiptoe, and it's basically um, a watermelon meets Spider-Man, but uh, I'm, I'm messing. It's the ninja power-up of the game. It lets you uh, jump on walls, as you can see Sam doing here, lets you cling to the ceiling, and lets you go into a bush format that lets you sneak past enemies and cameras. So you can see, and the first level here is a great example of pretty much all of its techniques. Yeah, it's really awesome that this game's wall jumping mechanic is specific to a power-up to let players kind of enable or disable it within their oh. own levels. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really great way to do it. Now, I don't know if you saw that there in that big uh, fight. Uh, Sam did a great uh, save getting smushed by that what's called the flapjack by using the bush form so that uh, he wouldn't take any damage. Well done, Sam. <laughs> Yes, and that bush will uh, be much more apparent of its abilities in a level here shortly. Because it is, depending on the level, it is actually required to just go through the enemies themselves, not just avoid damage. And the only way to do yes. that is with the Tiptoe's bush uh, ability. You know what? You that. But that level's not here just yet. Instead, uh, we get to see a little thing where uh, this game doesn't kill you if you go off screen. And so you can just go off the side of the map right there. As long as you don't go too far, you will always stay alive and you can just skip obstacles if the level doesn't explicitly block you off with walls. And we will be using this that kind of thing. This is one of the thing. early levels. So uh, it seems the developers were also not sure how to deal with cheese yet. Uh, yeah, so uh, Sam, not our legally Sam, but Sam, the developer of Beast Scotch. Uh, you are correct, Cash. You developed these levels early on. He did go back and touch them up quite a bit, so no excuses. <laughs> yes, but it's worth noting that this game did launch in early access, and so a lot of these levels were built while the game was being built, and so the creators of the game were learning just as much about the editor as the players were. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you could definitely, see, if you see some early versions of these levels, um, uh, probably some more cheese. And uh, didn't even have pass as decoration. Uh, I can't really point that out on that level there, but um, it is true that le the levels were built and improved on during early access. Temple Gauntlet is a level where you can save a lot of time. There's a whole section uh, that you can skip, like right up there to the right with that box you're supposed to go grab that box up there but fam's not going to do that yes because these little green guys they're called scrubs when you kill them they drop a shell like not too unlike koopas and mario but not exactly the same but an important property about those shells is that they can hold down switches and so by just killing 
that one scrub, grabbing a shell and taking it with me, we can just completely skip the need for that box and use a shell instead. He also skipped a whole hidden section with that spring. Yeah, yeah, springs are probably one of the most powerful items in this game, I'd say. Uh, it lets you do quite a bit of attack and reach very, very high places. Yes, yeah, but... you can you can do a super jump with a spring, uh, and I believe you can also do it infinitely. Yes, but that is not the kind of tech that uh, is necessary in any of these levels. Thank God, because it is very difficult. I think I no, can do it like twice. <laughs> twice per year. <laughs> yep. Yes, because um, we should also probably mention. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Sam. I was just going to say that a lot of the tech in this game is very, very difficult, but the most difficult stuff isn't useful in the campaign. And so, the most difficult stuff you see in here, while it's not easy, it is far from the limits of this game in general. Yeah, what would you say you're focusing most on doing well in a campaign run like this? Uh, not dying mostly, but. <laughs> That's always true. That's a good tip. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically every level has its own like laundry list of small things that I try and optimize as, as much as I can. And so there's no like one thing that I focus on during the run because every level has its own things because I've played most of these levels so many times that I have like a mental checklist that I go through every time I play them. That if I were to try to break down all of the stuff I focus on for these levels, we'd be here for another hour. And this run's not that long. <laughs> I hate meetings too. Because wh when I said this uh, game goes fast, it goes fast. Sometimes. Yeah, I, we probably should mention to you, uh, on that overworld, there's a couple of nodes. Um, the planet nodes uh, are the ones that uh, are the actual bubbles, but the other ones are cutscenes and um, unlocks. Um, the unlocks don't really do anything for mechanics in the game, they're, they're just for creator bonuses. But uh, if you notice that Sam's just skipping through these random nodes every now and then, that's what those are. Yes. And it's some a shame that we're skipping the cutscenes because they're hilarious. Yeah, you might hear. Uh little blurbs every time I skip one because the game the game uh it knows you're skipping them but it's okay with it because it gives you little funny blurbs every time you do uh, uh this is a pretty special level uh Cashy, do you want to maybe give a rundown on this one uh so he just did a super jump and after he gets through this room he's going to sneak into the top area from that little side room on the right He's really supposed to go to the right side first, but he's not going to do that. Yeah, because, like I mentioned earlier, you can just press switches with shells right there. And because when you throw items down, it gives you a little boost of height, uh, we can just go around that corner right there and go up into this top area early, using the box yeah. that we are supposed to hit the switch with. Yeah, I think uh, that was an interesting one, because I really don't even know... Um, it those shells weren't intended, I don't think, at all. I'm not even sure that the creator of the level, as you said, um, was aware that shells could be used like that. Because that's the second time you've done that in this uh, run, isn't it? Yes, and I'm unfortunately we won't be doing it too much more, but... Yes. And that was a beautiful damage boost. Yeah, because that is another thing worth noting, is that some levels give you armor, which is essentially just an extra hit. But because how, of how armor works in this game, it also gives you a huge amount of knockback. Whenever you get hit by something, if you have armor, you can just boost over a lot of sections that you're not supposed to. People are pretty divided on how it works. Some people don't like the uh, the knockback, but it is helpful for this run. Yes, yeah. and I mean, unless you're Sam, you're just going to be cursed. That armor is going to push you into the dearest hazard. <laughs> yes, it, it takes a That's lot true. of practice and knowledge to know what kind of angles you're going to get off of specific obstacles. And unless you, like, practice on in specific setups, like, dozens and dozens of times, you just can't predict how it's going to operate a lot of the time. But thankfully, yeah. campaign levels don't change, so I know how they're going to interact in most scenarios. Yeah. So on uh, this level, we're going to be uh, running into the second power-up of the uh, level head. Actually, there's only five power-ups in the campaign, but... Um, this is the second, it's the zipper. It's one of the more interesting ones, I think. It uh, lets you zip through three wide walls. Um, and also that zip gives you a little bit of a, not doesn't give you speed boost, but allows you to traverse, traverse a little bit faster. But uh, as you can see, Sam's absolutely killing it just going through all these walls. 
Yes. Yeah, Zipper he's doing great. is one of the most powerful power-ups in user levels, especially, but also in multiple campaign levels. Because uh, people don't remember just how it works most of the time. In that you can go through walls, not just the walls that people want you to go through. You can go through any walls as long as they're not no, four blocks something. wide or specifically made out of, like, uh, unpowered lead. Which is specifically made to keep people yeah. from zipping. And so as a result... It's very stressful to de-cheese zipper levels. Yeah. There's a lot of levels that you can just do things very unintended because they don't remember just how many walls you can go through. And you'll be seeing that multiple times throughout the run as well. Yeah, and uh, we saw earlier too, Sam did that uh, side level skip where you can kind of go two or three tiles off the side. You combine that with zipper, and um, it's probably one of the most common practice for cheesing a level. All right, and then this is keep up okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Both one of my favorite and least favorite levels because it used to be way harder until this strat specifically where you get sprint at the beginning there was uh, found because before you had to use tiptoe and the package to do a very precise trick where you like reset your cling in midair by doing a ceiling super jump. Now, thanks you have sprint, you can just make it to this platform, which you're never supposed to make it to normally. It's still not in easy skip, having to keep sprint that whole time. But it is significantly easier than the old method. All right. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, I'd actually say uh, sprint management is uh, probably one of the cooler things, I think, about watching uh, speedrunners. Um, even Sam watching you where you're trying to find sprint because you need, uh, I believe it's eight or seven and a half consecutive tiles to gain sprint. And then you have to make sure you're always holding a direction to maintain it. Yes. And sprint, you know, it makes you go faster. Obviously, that's important in a speedrun. But arguably the more important factor of sprint is that it gives you an extra tile of jump height. And so there is a lot of levels where if you don't have sprint, you just can't make the jumps that you're trying to make. So obviously going faster is important, but there is a lot of areas where things just won't work out the way you want it to if you don't have sprint. And there Sam just used the armor to boost through some spikes that would have taken at least like one or two cycles. Yeah, and this is a very cycle-dependent level, too, correct? Yes. I, I think the whole level is just running on those clock switches you see uh, every now and then. Yes, this is... Yep. Uh, slowly become one of my least favorite levels because of those cycles. Because one mistake and you all of a sudden lose five plus seconds. It's not a very fun level. This, on the other hand, is a very fun level to do the IL for, because you can. it is possible to beat this level holding right and never letting go. It is just very difficult to manage the timing for that, so I do not ever go for it during runs. One of the you few love... actual hold rights. Yeah, you gotta love the snapshot at the end of that level too, with the Lazumi sprunging up <laughs> at the very end. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's art, art, artistry at the, in the making there, Sam. <laughs> yes, and this and is. And now we have an auto runner. Or an auto-scroller, sorry. Yeah, it is one of two and a half auto-scrollers in the campaign. Thankfully, there is not too many of them. But you may wonder what I mean by two and a half auto-scrollers. That'll be pretty uh, clear in a couple levels, because the half comes up very soon. But, like I said, everything in this game is programmed through the editor on a level-by-level -level basis, including how auto-scrollers work. If somebody wants to yeah, talk about there's that. Yeah, there's a block, or like an item, called a camera anchor. And players can hook that up, set its path, and uh, set connected switches to define the camera region. Yeah, so basically, all of this camera movement was done manually. None of it is automatic. So... Like the level, as you saw, it went up, down, left, right, diagonals in between, everything. Every which way. And it makes for... And you can also control zoom. Yeah, it makes for much more interesting auto-scrollers than simply go to the right and don't slow down. Yeah, but you, you, still, get the, you still get the anxiety of having to keep up or uh, <laughs> slow down <laughs> in some cases, I guess, probably more for you than that. But uh, <laughs> you can't go too fast because you do get killed by going off the camera. 
Yeah, and unfortunately the uh, the paths can't go faster than the player can, so it's really hard to actually keep up with someone who has full sprint. Um, um, so I think on that last level, you used bombs to uh, traverse a big chunk of that. Uh, that was pretty impressive. I, I do have to maybe mention here that pretty much every item in the game, every power-up, everything, has some way of making GR18 move differently. It's a really cool design philosophy that the devs had of making all of the power-ups movement-based, or at least giving them some movement aspect. Yeah, no, they. I, I would say they're pretty much all movement-based and get some extra bonuses. Uh, I know one of them's got a punchy arm, but uh, it's, I still think it's just used more for movement. But um, yeah, even like we talked about the armor packs earlier, they let you get some damage boosts. Um, obviously, enemies can get you up places. Uh, it, it's pretty wild, and you can and see Sam using a pretty big variety here. Speaking yeah, of damage boosts, a boost. lot of damage boosts in this level. Yeah, that that Wrong ending is legend. one of the redeeming factor for that level because it's so cycle based. It is not fun to play, but that ending makes it much better Even to play through. It's just very fun to get that damage boost at the end. All right, and here we have. Another one of uh, the not so great levels because it's an extensive brawler where we just have to kill a lot of enemies and as quickly as we can. Yeah, yeah brawlers are fun, but not for speedrunning. <laughs> no. And I think we also, he won't pick it up. I'm confident Sam will pick it up, but probably uh, the most controversial item in the game just hanging there that Sam's intentionally trying to avoid, and that's the slurp juice. Um, it slows everything down. <laughs> Because even when you're playing casually, going slower isn't fun. So when you're speedrunning, it's ten times worse. Yeah, what's I'm your... not as much of a slurb juice hater as everyone else, but... <laughs> That's totally fair. Um, what, what was your tactics on getting through that fight there? Like, what are you what are you going for? Just quick... Uh, some sort of pattern? Okay. <laughs> no, I, I do have tactics, but I usually have to abandon them if the cycles don't perfectly line up the way I'm used to, and so I usually just end up winning that level. But something you might have noticed right there, uh, I might I opened the settings menu for a second. That was to do something that I call a map warp. And so if you might have noticed, you know, on the map, we got our little spaceship. We go in between all the planets to get to all the different levels, and it has like a little movement animation to get between them all. Sometimes that distance is really long, but what happens is when you open the settings menu, the game instantly puts you on top of the tile that you are moving towards. And so if the distance between the levels is long enough, you can just open the settings menu and close it, and it puts you immediately on the next level, and it's faster than waiting for the ship to actually travel. And we will doing, be, I'll be doing that a couple times during the run. Pretty complicated. I haven't exactly learned where all the points the best points to do that is, but... Yeah, I'm guessing that's one of those things you just have to um, do the run and start memorizing, right? Yeah, it's... Yeah. I only use it in three spots, so it's not too difficult to learn, but getting the muscle memory down so that you do it as quickly as possible takes a little bit of time. Do you think there are spots, uh, like, more spots where it could be useful, or is it just those three? I th I'm... Confident that it's only those three, not 100% confident, but pretty confident. Because the main thing is opening and closing the settings menu takes like about a second or so, and most of these don't even take a full second to move. It seems like something that would be more useful for all levels. Yes. I have not investigated that too closely, but I would imagine so. Uh, a quick bit of uh, history on this level. I think it was one of the first levels to really garner attention for speedrunning out of the campaign. Got a pretty cool strat, which Sam's about to do. Yes. Let's Using go. this uh, medallion, he warps out of the hole that he dropped into. Yes, because you are supposed to go around the side, you know, get the package, all, everything sees you and you have to make your way out. But by just teleporting back up, we can skip about half the level. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, would that medallion drop from an enemy, or is that one that's just laying around in that case? Uh, there was a pop that I killed. 
Okay, yeah, so a lot of the bigger enemies will have those items. Uh, I should actually mention, on this level here, we'll be seeing the third power-up, um, the Waylay, or I like to call it the Way Bay. Um, pretty popular power-up, and it allows you to dash and charge. Uh, it also allows you to break through certain walls, brick, brittle rock. Um, and it also allows you to punch enemies. Uh, did I miss anything on that, Cashew? I feel like um, I missed something. Uh, it is very useful for movement. If you do it on the ground, you'll do like a flat dash, and if you do it in the air, it'll be diagonal. Yes. And as you might have noticed at the end there, when you have sprint and you do a dash on the ground, you go very, very fast. And so if there is air followed by it, you do not lose that momentum. And you can just zoom across levels like that. It's pretty satisfying. Yeah. Is that one of the fastest movement speeds you can get in the game? Uh, the uh, fastest movement speeds in the game are basically all from Waylay, yes. <laughs> I mean, I have seen some levels where you go pretty fast with Ripcord, which yeah, but, we haven't seen yet. Uh, I think the two fastest, for horizontal movement at the very least, two of the fastest ways are both using Waylay though, whether it's sprinting with Waylay, or if you use Waylay into another power-up, it gives you a huge burst of speed as well. Okay, I think we need to explain what just happened on that last level there, of yeah. that boss fight. <laughs> yeah, so the game intends you to kill that boss, and it does so by uh, having a switch that checks to see if the boss is in the arena. But if you just make the boss teleport out of the arena, it thinks you kill it. Because the switch doesn't check to see if the boss is alive or dead, it just checks to see if it is present. And so by doing that... There can... are switches that check to see if it's alive or dead, or if you have killed any enemies, not specifically that one. Yes. But because of how they decided to implement it for that level specifically, we can just leave it alive and have a little pass for yep. Unfortunately, that's not true for all of the levels and enemies. Like yeah, these. I was gonna, I was gonna say no pop jaws were killed in the making of this speed run, but that is that is a blatant lie. <laughs> And this level, uh, you get to see the absolutely uh, most fair and not at all jank item in the game, the bumper. <laughs> uh, it's it's probably the best item in the game as far as I'm concerned. But uh... <laughs> not too bad. It is yeah. very consistent as long as you hit it in the exact same spot every single time with zero variation. Exactly. It, yeah, it looks like you had some pretty precise landings on those bumpers there, because it's uh, eight directional, so you have to make sure you hit that. And it looks like you had a nice diagonal one at the end to finish that up. Yes, I was. That is one that I always go for and very rarely get. Battery Gauntlet has a uh, pretty big skip, because although it's called Battery Gauntlet, you only actually need one battery, which you'll see soon. Because. Uh, we get the zipper, and like we mentioned earlier, uh, you can go through walls with zipper, and they forget that sometimes. So just by going out of the map, we can finish the level very quickly. Wow. Yeah, you can just, you can just see how much you destroy that level with the zipper. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Every zip is a wall. That is amazing. That's one of the best skips. Yes. And then this is. And uh, Hollow Mountain Hike is a level that a lot of speedrunners don't like that much. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, thankfully, yeah. Uh, I don't mind it as much anymore, but every once in a while it can absolutely just demolish a good run. Def definitely don't try to speedrun it when you don't know the route, like I did, and a lot of people probably did. Yeah, I can definitely see it getting complicated, because you really have to manage that uh, battery tossing there. Yeah, because that skip I did with the spring, in order to make that cycle with the box above me, if you miss that, it is a huge time loss, because you have either you have to go all the way up around the side, or wait for that box to come back down to the bottom in order to grab it again. And so if you can make that cycle, it saves a lot of time, and it is not... It's not hard to make, but you need pr to practice in order to get it. It's not so you can just get on a win. And here we're going to be coming up on Incredible Skip. Uh, one of the coolest skips in the run, and also one of the biggest skips in the run. Also very hard. Yes, it is not easy, but it is not the hardest skip in the run by a long shot. This level... It seems like you get it pretty consistently, though. Yes. 
This level uh, normally takes over 50 seconds if done perfectly. Uh, with this skip, you can beat it in under 17 seconds. Because by getting a weird damage boost off of that fire bar right there, we can just boost up on top of the level here. And then skip near the end. I want this checkpoint just in case. As you can see, it took him like three tries. It would take me like 20. Yes, yeah, so I sometimes I do get this first try in a run. Not always. But regardless, as you can see, that's a lot less than 50 seconds. And that he was also with used the multiple zipper to skip the tiptoe. Which he was supposed to grab and wall jump up. Yeah, because it's also worth noting that every time you pick up a power-up in this game, there's like a short like one second animation. And so if you can ever skip a power-up in this game, it is obviously faster to do so. Alright, and I think on this level, see, we, I may have seen him a little bit earlier, but um, these uh, items that are uh, hanging around that he's grabbing onto you are one of the items you can interact with the grappler. So uh, the grappler not only picks up items, but this uh, flingo uh, lets you propel yourself across the, across the level uh, by using the grappler. Yep. And uh, for some reason, if you use the flingo while you're on the ground, you'll immediately get sprint, which he used uh, at some point in that level early on. Yes. Yeah, they're. A, I think they're probably a fan favorite uh, item. Uh, they seem to be a pretty popular uh, thing to use. I mean, maybe earlier on these days, but uh, <laughs> they're a lot of fun to mess around with. Yeah, this strat where I uh, go off of that blob flush right there. I don't normally do that, but it looks way cooler, even though it is harder. So I wanted to try and get it. It's always good to prioritize looking cool. Yes. <sighs> Because yeah. the name the name of the game with a lot of stuff in this game is Momentum, and Flingos are Momentum personified. And so in, yep. in a level like that where it's just you have Flingos in the air, it is all Momentum. And uh, it's important to mention that your Momentum kind of depends on how close you are to the Flingo. Yeah, so if you're actually, it's a little inverted to what you might think it is too, because the further you are away, the more power your grappler gets to throw into the pole. So yeah, you get further, you sorry, you get faster if you grab the flingo from further away. Um, uh, he's uh, just bypassed a bunch of enemy calls, flip whips, and uh, I think you might also be interested to note in right now is that most of the enemies in this game, uh, there's a few exceptions, are very active in targeting GR18. Um, early on, there weren't a lot of enemies that um, just kind of walked about. Uh, so it, it, you have a lot of enemies that will actively try and uh, inhibit uh, Sam's path. Yeah. And this level is a fun level where it's like you're supposed to go around and do a few challenges to reveal signs so you can see what the code is. Because you need a specific code uh, to put these boxes on in order to unlock the package. I already know the code, so we can just go and finish the level right away. Nothing fancy there. Though he did need the power up, the waylay. Yeah, that, that's one of those levels where it's casually it's fun because you get to do a bunch of weird challenges to get the code, and to speedrun it, it's also fun because you get to skip all of it. Yes, yeah, so that's a pretty good. Part where we're gonna go to the left for a 15 second level. Yeah, this is a weird little level, but it is short. <laughs> Normally, that is way, way, way more difficult. But if you know the perfect cycles and when to hit those switches, it is very easy, thankfully. Followed immediately by another enemy gimmick level, where this level is littered with enemies and power-ups that will let you kill the enemies very easily. But if you kill a single enemy at any point, the level kills you. That was definitely for demonstration purposes and not because I messed up, 100%. We know, we know. I was about to say, we need a demo of how that works. <laughs> uh, yeah, right now he's picking up an item that's when he's flashing around. It's called the Electro Shield. It's kind of uh, half of the invincibility of other games, a lot of other popular platformers, and it instantly kills anything you touch, but it does not make you invincible to spikes or other hazards. There is another item that does that called the D-Bot, which we might see at some point. Uh, we've seen it a few times, actually, already. It has shown up already, but the thing is that one, you know, you're immune to obstacles, but enemies uh, do not die right away when you hit them. It's just you don't take damage from them either. 
And something okay. uh, weird about this enemy, the uh, Ocula, is that hitting it, each time you hit it, it will decrease in size until it's its smallest possible form. Yeah, so it doesn't truly die until you've killed its smallest possible form, so you can get away with beating it up a little bit. Yeah, that, that level uh, relies on you hitting enemies, but you, not, without yeah, killing bro. them multiple times. Uh, you know what? You already knew that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And I know we saw it earlier too, but it's another interesting use of the package in that level. You can throw the package at enemies to um, knock them around a little bit, so it's great when you're trying to clear them out of narrow areas. Um, okay, I should probably mention really quickly, we're hitting another power up here, it's called the Ripcord. It's like you have a helicopter that's short on gas, you can boost yourself up short distances and glide around. Um, he's gonna, Sam's gonna do some cool tricks here. Yeah, he's gonna do a, uh, he's gonna do something called a pixel jump, which takes advantage of the fact that a spike's hitbox is smaller than the hitbox of the ground. So if there's a spike tile on top of a ground tile, you can actually land on the ground tile underneath it, just on the edge, like he just did. Yeah, so. and the key point there is that landing resets your uh, booster. Yes, and so if I didn't do that, I would have had to spend another 10 seconds going around doing stuff. All right, and here we're coming up on the actual hardest skip of the run. I only ever go for it one time, and if I don't, I do the rest of the level like normal. Let's see if I get it. Right, only air. Ah, no, I was a little too early. Okay, so what this, what this essentially what it is is, just like the top and the sides, you can go off the bottom of the map very slightly without dying. The key, the key is very slightly, because if you go anything more than, a, than about a tile, you will instantly die. And because gravity exists, only going one tile off the screen is very difficult. But if you can finagle your way back up with the ripcord, you can go under that wall in the middle and go immediately to that second half of the level. And it saves about 10 or 15 seconds if you can get it first try. And so, so definitely worth going for at least once a run. Yes. But if you do die, it is always fast to just keep going with the level normally because of that checkpoint that you essentially are always hit when going for the trick. Yeah, because uh, when I say that's the hardest trick of the run, I am not exaggerating. I think I have gotten that trick a total of maybe six times total during runs. Does the current record use that? Yes, the current world record does have that trick in there, which I set about a week ago. Because <laughs> The world record I is thir uh, 43 minutes and 44 seconds because I, I beat the old one by two seconds with... That trick being the only reason I was able to get the world record. If I admit, had missed it, I wouldn't have gotten it. But here we have another interesting little brawler level where, uh, you know, we got the ripcord, but it also has tons of bombs littered all over the place. This is actually my favorite level of the campaign, though it seems like a pain to speedrun. Yes, it is, is a very fun level when, when you can get it and get it quickly. And the moment anything goes wrong, it's the worst level in the campaign. Well, I think that's just every level. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm mostly saying that because I'm still bitter about losing 35 seconds there in my world record. Uh. Oh, wow. There, there's the optimization spot, eh? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a level that really plays with the whole explosion mechanics. Because yeah, so in uh, this level, oops, yeah, you see the uh, rockets uh, flying around here. Um, and they, can, they don't actually kill GR18. They just propel GR18 in, in the direction uh, that they hit him from. Yeah, so they don't they don't kill GR18. They just make you hit the obstacles instead. Sam has a had a beautiful strat for getting min dunk there. That was pretty impressive. I, I missed that. What was it? They were using the rocket. Uh, well, he used the rocket and then threw the package, so he wouldn't hit the top of the goal, and then they both would like be at the bottom. Ooh, nice. Oh. So, um, this this level seems very, uh, different I, in a bit of a feel. Like, it seems very similar to some earlier levels with lots of key grabs and stuff like that. It almost seems like it's a breather for you. Is that true? No? Uh, it's definitely one of the easiest levels at the end here. I will say that. Because it's followed immediately by one of the most annoying levels in the campaign. Trick the cannon. Because, like, like we said earlier, those explosions, they don't hurt GR-18. They do hurt enemies. And they do push, uh the package and other items around. However, when you have to 
angle them so they hit enemies very specifically, it gets very annoying very quickly when the enemies don't cooperate. Thankfully, they weren't too bad there, but that one section very easily can go south and you lose like 15 seconds there as a result. I can't say I blame them for not cooperating. Thankfully, that was uh, Seems like relatively clean, but... Yeah, probably one of my favorite ending uh, snapshots there, too. Just all those uh, rockets ready to get you. <laughs> Terrifying. All right, and here we have the best uh, level name in the entire campaign, Grand Theft Grotto. I'd also say the best level in the campaign myself. <laughs> it's a very good level. I don't know if it's the best, though. I really love watching speedrunners just, like, hit all of those switches that they're not supposed to hit. See, those eye switches activate the cannons that start shooting. So the idea is that you sneak around them, but speedrunners just ignore that part. Yeah, It's, it's worth noting, uh, yeah. like, this is one of the best level names in the campaign. Uh, the way level names work in this game, uh, it, there is not a free naming system for... Uh, very obvious moderation reasons. Instead, you get a the combobulator, which is full of lists of words that fall into different categories that you can use for your level names. So yeah, and uh, the uh, creators um, of the uh, game also stuck with that, and they uh, named all the campaigns using the same tools that uh, the creators would get to use. And I think there might be some levels that actually can't be made with the combobulator, but most of them can be. And, Ooh, to go <laughs> yeah, what, one of the, the main interesting things about the Compobulator is it allows, like, you might not be able to name a level what you want it to, but oftentimes the level name you end up with will be ten times more interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. On the end of that Grand Theft Grotto there, you just bypass the power-up. <laughs> yes, because the, the Ripcord makes it easier to survive that section. It's not required to, and so you save a second by skipping the power-up. Okay. You guys mind? For uh, so in this level here, configuration? yeah, go for it. Yep. Uh, right now we just got um, one ten dollar donation by Time Conceivable. Uh, just saying, go Sam. Sorry about that. All good. Anything else? Is hey. that it? No, uh, just a time check. How far are you guys done with the run? Uh, there is Almost about uh, less than five levels left, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Thanks, Tim. Tim's awesome. He's been a long-time community member. Um, yeah, as you can see, Sam actually just picked up a new power-up. It's called the Rebound. I'd say it's probably the most controversial power-up um, in the game. It um, lets you shoot projectiles, and it forces GR18 backwards while sending the projectiles forward. They have a bouncing arc. You can jump off them. They hurt enemies. They trigger switches. Um, but it's a very challenging uh, um, power-up to control. It's almost like a reverse waylay, but then it also has the projectiles, unlike the waylay. Yeah, so you can see Sam, uh, this is a very vertically oriented level, and you can see definitely see uh, Sam using the rebounds, upwards, boosting kind of nature. Yeah, and by combining it with super jumps, you can go very high very quickly. It's just missing one super jump is very annoying in this level because it loses you a lot of time. But, yeah, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, but the box is harder to super jump than the package, correct? Yes. The Their hitboxes are not exactly the same, so the it's just a little bit harder overall to finagle things. And irrelevant to the run, but if you do something called an infinite rebound super jump, uh, you could actually see a piece of the level that was unused all the way at the top. It's like a little spider made out of the tiles. And here we have the last auto-scroller of the run. Thankfully, the shortest and the easiest. Because you just uh, zip through here with the rebound, and that's basically all the whole level. And then after this, there is two more levels. Uh, the second to last level, coming up right here, uh, it's a troll level because the second to last level of the campaign is in fact a troll level. It's a fun troll level, but you're not gonna be seeing too many of the trolls because I either already know how to avoid them or I'm going to be skipping them outright. Like for example, right here, it's gonna have a little key taunting you to teleport around. I, I just grab it anyway. 
and then you know you get a, get a little break a little fake out with that bumper but you can just jump to the end there Ooh, i hate it when that happens because uh you're supposed to wait on this platform until you get into that cannon you can jump early but sometimes if you don't get the exact angle right you get the cannon shot but it didn't move into place perfectly before you get fired out of it and so you miss slightly but now we can just uh, zoom back through all the trolls, make it to the end of the level. And we're coming up on the final level of the run here. Time does stop when I hit the goal on the last level. And uh, with this final level, there's actually a skip that lets you beat it in 10 seconds, but it's banned for full game any percent because it's just kind of boring. Uh, it's not super consistent either, is it? It's, pr it's pretty challenging, but still, I can... Definitely not uh, as entertaining as see, watching at least part of the level being played. That doesn't mean yeah, there's at... no skips, though, because we can just... Oh, there's definitely still skips. ...go right up here. Because the the whole get, the idea behind this level, it's like a triumphant finish. You get to go through all the power-ups, do a whole bunch of challenges. Yeah, by doing that super jump, we just skip the entire tip uh, section. And so we go straight to Ripcord instead. Uh, see a little bit of the simulation aspect there of using the bombs to uh, sorry using the rockets to light the bombs which then blow up the bricks which then unlocks the switch <laughs> yeah. and then for whaley we get there a little a whole section there to the left uh in that little hub area which he doesn't have to do because he skipped it earlier yeah and i will note uh we did meet the incentive for killing the block push at the end of this level so we will see what that means very shortly unfortunately yeah, the uh, blobfish are one of the few enemies that are very passive, so uh, murdering them is... it's a crime. <laughs> Agreed. So, I, while we are getting the 2 to 4 so with all the power-ups here, there is actually one power-up that is not in the campaign. Um, it's a very cool power-up that lets you to throw a ruin around and lets you teleport to it. Um, just throwing that out there that... Uh, there is some extra surprises for those that are interested in creators. <laughs> and here's our good friend, the Blobfush. And that is time. And that that end section where you just skip all of the uh, the power-ups with the zipper is a perfect, perfect example of zipper cheese. Yes, and so with that, we are finished with the run. And yeah, that was a, that was level head in a nutshell. Or at least the campaign. There is a <laughs> lot that this game has to offer that doesn't get shown off, unfortunately. But you get to see a lot of what this game has. And it is a very dynamic game, diverse game. And it has a lot for you, no matter who you are. As a player or a creator. So, And it has a great community. Yeah, so. yeah we're pretty nice. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. unless when we're murdering Blobfish. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. as we are finishing out here, I'll uh, give some shout-outs, you know. You got the Levelhead community. I know there's a, a good number of them in chat right now. But there's tons of great creators out there. There's tons of people who stream this game regularly, if, if that is your fancy. You know, I, I try and do speedruns every, you know, once or twice a week at least. PK here streams this game every week. He, he, he does a lot of good streams for as well. Cashew also streams. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of great people out in there in the community. I can't shout out all of them. There's too many of them. But they, they know who they are. Um, yeah, it actually... They're, they're hiding out there. But yeah, there's definitely there's a speedrunning community, there's a building community, there's a speedrunning for the campaign community, speedrunning for level user level community. Uh, there's all sorts of sub stuff going on there, so uh, do check it out. Um, but Sam, I gotta say, that was an amazing run. It was, it was super cool watching that. There's it, lightning fast, lightning fast to watch. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And Do you have a time? What was your time for that? Oh, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is on the layout here. But yeah, I want to thank Indithon, you know, for having me, letting us show off Levelhead, talk about it for 45 minutes, ramble on a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's uh, about all we've got here for us. Okay, um, if that is it, 